Hello, Jimmy. Patrick. Here we go, buddy. Welcome to 148. Hey, man, it's just good to see you. I don't see you as often as I used to now that we're not touring together. This is crazy. I haven't seen you. Well, I've seen you once uh, since the last episode. This is not normal. I'm used to spending the weekend in a city randomly together. I know. I feel like it's actually a little bit more pleasant than usual. It's kind of nice to see you as well. Not as sick of you. Oh, good. This is this is impressive. This, this is, is going to be a, of us. a very good time. At least for the next several minutes. I want to hear all about what you did so, without me this weekend. Uh, not very much. I uh, I was I was I had no headliner to follow. I had no I had look, to follow around. I had no one to talk to. I had no one to ask questions. Uh, no, I was here. I did uh, I did Zanies in Rosemont. I hosted for Jackie Fabulous. It was a really fun weekend. Jackie Fabulous. Jackie Fabulous. Oh, Have you beautiful. seen Jackie Fabulous? No. She was, uh, she's funny. She's very funny. She's out of New York. Um, really very nice. Very funny. Uh, uh, when your name is fabulous. You have to be fabulous. You should get into show business. She lives up to it. It is a stage name. I, I think her real name is something that's also like, I, I think it's, I, I don't want to. Jackie Marvelous? Up. I think it's like Champagne or something like that. Like another great name. I was shocked to see. Whatever her name was really Jackie Fantastic. <laughs> and like, that's a little over the top. <laughs> We're going to put you back to Jackie Fabulous. That's great. Was she fab? She was. She was really great and incredibly funny, really nice. So it was a great weekend. We had it was an eventful weekend. Thursday night. Did you screw up at all and say that name in the intro when you're like, "You guys are gonna love your headliner. She's fabulous." <laughs> and uh, ah! she. Oh no! I gave it away. Please welcome Jackie. Really great. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You can't say the same adjective twice. That's a rule in comedy. Uh, I was here with Alex, who does a, does such a great job producing the video for us on this uh, this weekend, and uh, I have to laugh because Thursday was a bit of a uh, Thursday was a bit of a struggle. Like with someone, it was a heckler who got kicked out uh, pretty early on in the show. Um, there there was some microphone issues up top. There was a uh, there was a, someone who needed medical attention, and thank God Alex was here and, and was a former medic. And was all of this to, was happening at the same time. Uh, this all happened during the ninety minute show on Thursday night. Wow! So we're sitting here at the end of it, going like. Is this it, or is this going to be like the Woodstock documentary, where it's like, and that was just Thursday, and then the credits go, you know, and like for, we we had to come back and do it two more nights, you know, you didn't want the documentary to be like, why did they keep doing shows? This kept happening. What was the medical thing? Uh, someone uh, unfortunately had a seizure, and uh, and thank God Alex was here and and, and trained, and uh, they were out in the lobby and uh, was able to just uh, help work with this gentleman until he was and and someone called in, you know, uh, back up from from Rosemont out front. I mean, that's the benefits of being in a place like this, right? People aren't too far away. They were able to get medical attention here pretty quickly, and he was able to walk out of here under his own power. Did he get buy two drinks? He, uh, he they made sure <laughs> hey, he not so fast. Hang on now. There two is a, items. There is a two item minimum. We'll put something to go. That's fine. You can take a water for the road. They did not. Uh, oh, that's scary. I mean, that's uh, way to pivot, Alex. Way to go. Unbelievable. Wearing a lot work. of hats. Awesome. So yeah, it was. Uh, that was my weekend. I was here. It was really fun. Uh, it was great. What about you, dude? I was off. I uh, Friday night just chilling at home. You know. Watch a little documentary on Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah? As a Southsider, you're drawn to that name. That's right up your alley. I know some Fitzgeralds. You sure do. Well, Ella a was, couple pubs. was a uh, definite trailblazer. Almost didn't even get a shot. She was uh, put on the map by a big band. This is back when they had big bands. Sure. All right. That's how Sinatra got going, right? Oh, was it really? The Tommy Dorsey band. Okay. He was out traveling with, you know. So she was with a guy who uh, they called an invalid. That's the, uh, have you heard anyone called that before? I've heard the term. An yeah. invalid? Yeah. I didn't know how you spelled that. Do you know how to spell that? Invalid? Invalid. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not pronounced that way. It's not. It's, it's not. It's an invalid. <laughs> it's like. You are invalid, but we're going to pronounce it a yeah, little differently slightly. to make it seem like you can hang around. <laughs> but you are but invalid. You can't really hang around at the same time. I love some of the terms that they use it's in the uh, medical community. Maybe Alex could shine some light on that. We, we Did Alex come up with grave condition? <laughs> you ever contemplated that? He's in grave condition. What does that mean? Well, he, he should be in a grave. He's literally on death's doorstep. But we can't put him in there yet. <laughs> Just yet. But he is conditioned for said grave. We're leaning him that way, so when he falls, it's right where he goes. <laughs> He's in uh, cemetery shape. <laughs> He's uh, getting ready for uh, the ground. He's in ground, uh, ground this, control. This guy was third floor yesterday, but now he's, he's in emergency. Yeah, so Ella was put on the map by this invalid who was, uh, I think he had like a <laughs> spinal issue. I think like, you said it wrong, but go ahead. But he reluctantly brought her out on the road, mm -hmm. and she blew up, Ella. Amazing. You know? You remember her. 
I do. Big, big hit. Tisket, a tasket. <laughs> you know I mean? I think, beautiful song. I think Lizzo is covering that I now. I believe she might be. I mean, human, that, that is like, think about the things that we used to be singing about. And, and when you talk about like now, like this uh, culture of quote unquote being woke. Sure. Like I'm watching the Elvis movie. I, that's another thing I did over the weekend. Man, you guys live that. your dreams without me. Uh, and when he's up there back. gyrating. And, and thrusting his pelvis, is that the non-woke crowd that is saying, this is going to lead to every the demise of our culture? He's up there singing about his shoes? How dare he? But weren't they? Yeah, right? Like, the parents were mad about that, too. And it was the kids yeah. who were like, it's fine. Up there singing about a hound dog. <laughs> what does that mean? Is that a reference to something? <laughs> but Ella was uh, out there, tisket to tasket. Uh, found her yellow basket, you know, and set the world on fire. This was this would be the equivalent of Madonna's "Like a Prayer." That's awesome. Getting out there, tisket tasket, tisket tasket. What was that about? I'm trying to pull it up. What I know it? of Ella. I don't know this song of hers. It was a nursery rhyme, and this is back. This is Ella's young days. This is before the uh, the bank glass window glass. You know the glasses. Sure. The, uh, the thick magnifying. Remember Ella later in life. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every time you say Ella, by the way, I want you to go Ella, Ella, <laughs> a, a, a. Like every single time you say it, it's bothering me that you're not finishing the song. But go ahead. I should have. You should have. Is there an Ella Fitzgerald reference in that, in the umbrella, the uh, Rihanna? There I don't should think be. There. <laughs> she was, it's obviously. A, it's a Wheel of Fortune before and after. It's Umbrella Ella Fitzgerald, <laughs> is the, that's the puzzle. I have a girl named Ella on my team. Good. Who I often confuse with. Emma. How? Oh, how? And Emmy. How do you confuse the how three of them? How do I have all these names on my team? How do you confuse the three of them? So it was really the nursery rhyme, a tisket, a tasket, that she made famous. Yes. That's uh, amazing. Set the world ablaze. America has never been the same since. Uh, but no, it was just fun to watch something on someone I don't know a whole lot about. Yeah. But I remember my parents playing her stuff, and they knew a lot about her. So that was part of the weekend, Jim. And then I uh, went to the White Sox game with the family. That's awesome. Brought the kids out. I love that. Um, we had uh, really nice seats. Beautiful night. Not the outcome we had hoped for, uh, but my kids got a ball. You know, they really? Were, they were over there like the old school, like, you know, yeah, hanging, yeah. By, hanging by the wall. Sure. Like, Can I get a ball? Sure. Can I get a ball? It's like they're just the middle of the game. Not right now. <laughs> You're not going to get one. And then people are trying to get, there's not a lot of autographs anymore. Sure. Like you notice that. Right. And you notice like fewer kids getting down to the wall, fewer kids like, I don't know, screaming at the players, getting yeah. their attention. So just less interesting. personal. Interesting. Was it, were you, how it's long like before the game? Were it's you like they're not as like ready to, you know, yeah. They're not as, uh, what would you call, what's the word I'm looking for? Aggressive? Yeah. They're just not as. I anyway. think so. They're more, I mean, just different hobbies, right? They're sitting back, they're on screens. I say that. But there was a kid on the field the other night. Did you see that? <laughs> I did. Like a child, like ran on the field. Now I don't want to get out of uh, ahead of myself here, but uh -huh. I was told that this kid went to the grammar school where my kids go to. Really? Yeah, and he's banned for life from from the, the guaranteed rate. Oh my gosh! Is what I heard. Maybe really? We, maybe we can get this sixth maybe we can grader. Get him on. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. A lifetime ban. Yeah, that's big. Well, you don't go on the field, Jim. Have they heard about some of the things some of these athletes have done? I mean, some of the people who play on those stadiums are, are, are amazing. Yeah, it's going to be curtains for him. But, yeah, we had a great time at the game, um, and that, that was really it. I had a bunch of Joe's Head games, coaching, just family stuff. That's awesome. Is that all you got into, working here? I did a lot. I kind of want to get into I, I, this idea that she took a nursery rhyme to, like, the top of the charts. I guess I never really thought about that's what happened. Like, was there a point that people are just listening to the radio and being like, all right, number one, here is Farmer in the Dell. Like, was that really how those things became classics? Yes, that's how your whole genre was born. Unbelievable. Hip-hop. Well, hip-hop came just rhyming. from... It's, well, just, it's all just rhyming, isn't all music? Isn't Lottie Dottie a nursery rhyme? Absolutely. But that was Lottie derived Dottie. from... She's she actually... Lottie Dottie, you have to learn how to go potty. That's how the, uh, that's how the original went. I didn't know that. No idea. I didn't know that. I did. I was here all weekend, and then uh, uh, I, 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 I bought a membership this week already, Pat. It's Tuesday morning. Feel pretty good about it. I, uh, a membership? I, I bought a membership uh, to the Morton Arboretum. 
I'm a tree guy now. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I, uh, I got talked into it. Uh, it was they, they're, they're very good at what they do. Have you ever been to an Arboretum? A lot of trees. I want to know who talked you into this. The people at the Morton Arboretum. <laughs> the, the, an arborist? The, an arborist. Yeah. By the way, tree people look a lot like trees. I, have you noticed that? They're very tall, lean. Uh, little, little, little dirty, you know, little, little, little tan complexion. They do. They look like long hair. They got a little tree in them. You notice that? That's you something I've learned. Last not looking days. well. I have Dutch elm. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe that you're saying this because yesterday a tree across the street from us was struck. Come on, by lightning, unbelievable, and broken half. Brimley effect snapped right in half, right down the middle. Fell towards the old convent. What? Would have taken out some nuns back in the unbelievable back in the day. Seriously, no joke. And and did the other half? Is the other half still standing? Yes, yes. That's my favorite. When you get half a tree left for like a couple of days, if you're just a random driving down the street and you see half a tree, oh, go go make a bat out of that. <laughs> it really should. It really was like out of a. It's like eleven in the morning, and uh, I saw this huge flash. Yeah, and I heard something, but oh I didn't think God. it was a tree. And I just kind of went on. And then I, uh, it, directly in front of her, I'll show you. I have a video of it. I'd love to it. see it. But it's, um, yeah, that was, I don't mean to cut you off. No. I haven't been to the, Ar the Arboretum, the Morton Arboretum. Yeah, it's the salt people. Do you know that? Uh, I thought it was the steakhouse. I thought they, were, they started with steakhouses. And then they're like, let's open an Arboretum. No, it's the salt people, for real. <laughs> no, I know. It's oh, okay, <laughs> good, good. I was like, do they also own the steakhouse? Did it he, makes sense. He owned the land out there? Don't the Lowry Steakhouse people make the Lowry Steak Salt? I really thought that could have been yeah. like a very real. So the Morton family, they own that land out I'm gonna there? I'm going to set up a collabo. They do. They do. It, do they and have... I'm a member now, so I think I get free salt. I think that's part of the, I haven't looked at the whole terms and conditions, but I think I get free salt. I think you have to rake, too. <laughs> I think I have to go in twice a year. As a member. Mm -hmm. I have to go in twice a year and, oh, and clean mulch. I'll beg. It's a <laughs> I'm just putting them in piles. I'm so afraid of not getting my money's worth out of this membership. I've gone two days in a row because I have to go like five days to get my money's worth. Wait, how long does it take you to get to the Arboretum? Like 20 minutes. It's 15, 15 minutes. Actually. Don't you have any trees by your house? Not this many. You're like, do you even look at those? It's 50. I do. You're like, I'm not even going to get into it right now. I'm keeping my appetite. This I'm is... not even going to acknowledge these trees. These ones don't matter. I went there for a leaf project. Are these free trees? When I was what? in eighth grade. Did you really? Because I couldn't find a sassafras oh, man, that's on the south side. I get that. Ginkgo, I was able to locate. Okay. I'm still able to identify some trees. Are you? Because of this project. Really? Um, but the people as trees, I'm not as familiar with. Really? Who was the one that spoke you into this, uh, <laughs> shook you down? Just the, the person. Into this five days a week to make it, I got to break even, I go five days a week. Well, five Jim, days in a year. You're typically out of town three days a week. I have to go five oh. days total. Oh, five days a but year. But since it's like oh. the end of the year, like I don't want to I don't want to not go enough before it gets cold and then not make it up. You know what I mean? Do you have a social membership? I'm pretty good. Or are you full member? I'm full member. No, I appreciate you you're asking. Like, Get out of that tree. I appreciate you You're asking. just a social. No, I, right. I I get to yell at those people who they can only, yeah. Uh, normies can only come in between like nine and six. I get to go at 7 a.m. <laughs> you know, I get to I get to really become one with the tree before anyone else gets there. Are you able to go on Ladies' Day? I, I, I don't, I haven't, I haven't asked. Should I? I mean, I think you should. Is that, I've, should I trade the free salt for what, that? What are you doing in there? I just, I, I, I'm looking for a place to walk and write. And you know how I like to start things. And I know how you like them. to walk and write. <laughs> Around trees. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Who are you all of a sudden? I have no idea. Pat. Thoreau? I have no idea. Why don't you just it hang is. around the Chancery I Lakes? I am struggling without a, a job, apparently. I don't know enough. what's happening anymore. By the way, guys, I've been to Jim's house. He lives in a forest, it's basically. Not, I mean, yeah. He lives but surrounded wanted, uh, by trees and land. Yeah. So now you're, you're, you venture into the Arboretum as a non-member. Uh-huh. 14 bucks. It's not bad. It's a good day. 14 bucks for you if you want to get in there. And then how much do you do pay for the membership? Uh, $64. And you just have to go, well, yeah, five times. Right? And yeah. I'm two fits of the way there already. I'll make do. I'll, I'll make good of it. I will. I used to always. I want to go with you the sixth time. D yeah, man. And just be like, Dude, this is on the house. Playing with that. We can do whatever <laughs> we want now. You want to go see? I want to show you what's Weeping Willow. <laughs> don't give a. I don't even need to see that. <laughs> I already know that Willow. 
Are you riding your bike? Let me show you the conifers. You can, and that's one of the things I want to do also. So oh, I haven't, you haven't done. That I yet? haven't done that yet. No. What have you done? I have just walked. I've okay. hiked. Um, I, I <laughs> what have I? Done? I've just do sat have, and had coffee in the cafe. And do I've, you? No. Do you have a favorite tree? I do not have a favorite tree. I think it's just more about the the, the the landscape and the scenery than a specific tree. Um, I met some huckleberries today. They seem nice. I don't know. They saw some. <laughs> there were some different trees in there. Um, it's great. I like it. I, I fall for memberships sometimes. Pat, have you, do you fall for memberships ever? Have you talked to them about having a comedy night? <laughs> at the, at the morning, you know, right we now. could do a show here. We could probably. You're like sixty chairs in there. I'll talk to my friends. I did join the Museum of Science and Industry. Yeah. Okay. Um, as a single man. Okay. Many years ago, because the line to get in was so long. <laughs> And I was like, I went up to this counter. Whatever, sure. And, and I was like, if I sign up for a membership, can I get in right now? I'm like, yeah. Well, let's do it. <laughs> let's go right I'm now. Like, well, how much was it? Like, yeah. you got to come, you know, they do that thing. Yeah. You come here four times a year, it pays for itself. Sure. Plus, you get to sleep over. <laughs> in the Museum which of is Science not and a Industry? joke. They used to do like a sleepover night there. You get to Nick Cage it? You could have a sleepover. And I remember, like, going back, it was when I was living with my buddies, and I was like, guys, we can, like, crash here one night. And it sounded fun. <laughs> uh, we never did do it. You guys want to have a sleepover at the museum <laughs> with me? It what would, do you guys think, like, what, how are you guys thinking Wednesday? Hey, guys, remember, we got to schedule the sleepover at the museum still. That's the best. It's like trying to <laughs> flag your friends down for some. Guys, are we still, if not, cool, but just let me know if we're going to do this. I got the museum still if we want to sleep over. Yeah, sure, yeah. You guys want to do Lollapalooza? That's cool. Yeah, we'll go to Vegas for the bachelor party, but just keep in mind, you want to sleep over by the coal mine. I got this museum sleepover thing if you want it. Dude, I love that you joined the uh, the Arboretum. It's crazy, right? I How don't are know. they making money there? I have no idea because of me. Because I, they, And that's the thing. They were like very – I felt like you went to the ladies at the uh, the Saratoga Springs when they are like, oh, we got one. Like that's how I felt when I walked in there. They were very – very excited to see somebody. The uh, the others who are in there at seven a.m. By the way, not big Jim Flanagan fans. They are, they are a couple decades older and looking at me like, "What are you doing in here?" Like I stumbled out of the forest. I love that. Later in the day, you're like watching probably the uh, Manti Teo documentary. <laughs> like, how did this guy get suckered in? A meanwhile, <laughs> your your arboretum membership papers are oh. all over the coffee table. I'm a man of the trees now, Patrick. <laughs> I used to have friends who get suckered in by, like, uh, Great America every year. That was always my favorite because it was, like, just under the cost of going twice. You know what I mean? So it was, like, 60 bucks if you go today, right? And then, like, 110 for the year. So you have to come back less than one time. And it was like, I'll come back less than one time. I can, I can make this work. Like I was when, never paying full freight on that because I always had a can of you Coke. a can of Pepsi. <laughs> That had three dollars off that I held on to for ten months. Oh, that's a great regional joke right there. I hope other people had something like that. Their own six flags. Go through the recycle bin. Oh man. There's one in here. <laughs> that's gonna be And then they had the Twicket. The Twicket. You could come back. So it's six six flags theme park, right? It's uh, it's a good one. Great America. Got some great rides, some upside down, some loop de loops. But the Twicket, you could come back the next day for like a dollar, right? A dollar. Or two dollars? Is that why it was called a Twicket, like a TW? I don't think so. I think no. it was just two in a row. I think it was a dollar originally. Was it a dollar originally for that Twicket? Did you ever get the Twicket? No, I never did because no one ever wanted to go back. No one ever wanted to do it twice so in a row. They just took, they just got an extra dollar for nothing. But this is different. This, this is, is different. a uh, arboretum. This is. People are gonna want you never ha- this get is. enough. You know how like you get bored Let's of amusement go. parks, but trees are Let's cooler. Go back. That's the thing. This is like how you want to be in trees all the time. I think the only difference is on the way to Great America, you don't drive by a million roller coasters. <laughs> I don't however, know. I do, the way, however, you have a tree mm-hmm. outside your window. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I love no, that I you. Uh, I love that now you have a place to go. Maybe we'll do a live episode. Can we do an uh, arboretum episode? Yeah, I, have a, I don't know why you're so taken aback by this. This is a very gym move. Can we admit that? I'm not Signing taken aback something. by it. I think it's right on brand. It's very on brand. You pull in, you got the kayak on your roof, <laughs> the bike, you roll uh, in. Weren't you trying feel to all instrument? I'm comfy in my padded shorts. As long as it doesn't conflict with your motorcycle classes. That is all we need. I think you're going to be good. And I love that you are you have a new facet. Isn't that nice? You know, I mentioned Manti earlier. Did you watch yeah, the doc? I did. A lot of people are this into this. Is, I remember, like, this was the biggest thing in the world. I was like, this is, this is when I got Twitter. 
You know what I mean? Like when this started trending and I was like, oh, th- and everyone's just throwing out there their theories and everything. I was like, oh, this is, I understand why people like this now. Because you can just sit there all day. I was enthralled when this happened. I kind of, I mean, I definitely remember the sure. whole thing. I didn't dive into all the details. I'm not the biggest ND See, I'm fan. A, yeah, I know. And even at that time, it was already the whole Manti thing was, Getting had out spun out. And it was getting the Notre Dame treatment yeah. that I've seen my entire life. Oh. Everyone tripping over themselves. Oh, the haters are going to hate. To kiss the ass of me- oh. mediocrity. Oh, so bad. I mean, think about that. He was a finalist in this uh, Heisman that he yeah. had really no business being a finalist. I don't, dis- I don't agree with that at all. He was the most dominant defensive player in the country. There was, <laughs> even in the documentary, they say that there were plenty of defensive players that had better numbers that had never been close to a... It spun out. One guy said that. Typical, I understand that thought. I typical disagree. Notre Dame. Okay, I disagree. What was the? Um, he didn't win it, right? He did not win it. Johnny Manziel Johnny won Manziel. it, and right choice was made. Clearly, a upstanding human being won it in his place. Who's Johnny the last Heisman? Oil money, Manziel. Who was last year's Heisman? No, who's the last Heisman from uh, from Notre Dame? Would have been Tim Brown. Was it or Rakib Ishmael? I believe was more recent than Tim Brown in the nineteen eighties. Okay, so Tim Brown had won it in eighty eight. Then you had uh, the Rocket. Did he win? Yeah, he won it. I thought he did. Okay. Is that... And then did Theismann win it? He did not win it. I apologize. Uh, Looks like... But you would be led to believe he won it because he went to Notre Dame. (laughs) Right? I mean, this is... This is Notre Dame. Everyone thinks that they're better than they are. They haven't really done anything in our lifetime. I mean, but they won a national they won championship a few in, national in championships. 88. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. They're, you're right. So they're as good as, like, who? <laughs> who else has won one God, championship? the haters are loving this. In the, in the Kansas City Royals? In the last 30 years? Uh, yeah. yeah. The White Sox? Yeah, they're the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're nobody, really. I mean, they were good <laughs> before they let every race and creed play. I mean, they won a lot back in the day. They certainly did. The Four Horsemen. I am certainly not defending 1930s Notre Dame. And Newt Rockney. I am certainly not defending (laughs) 1930s Notre Dame. Oh, okay. Well, then let's fast forward to Lou Holtz. Yeah. And and his, uh, I mean, can you even listen to that man? Now, no. No. But when he was coaching, did you have to listen to him? Sure, yeah. He was running his mouth all the time. <laughs> I mean, it, why were you consuming so much of it? Was it because you had four channels and, and, and they were constantly on NBC? No, because I, I get it. They shoved it down people's throats. They always have. I get that. Well, I grew up. Which is great if you like Notre Dame. I grew up in a very right? Irish Catholic right? community. And there is a feeling that because it says Irish that you have to like them. And that's the thing that, right there that i I don't like about Notre Dame right. is they get fans just for that, right? And there's a huge counterculture of people who hate Notre Dame because of that. Like growing up in that and always being lumped in with it. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I completely get it. I just know that they've always sucked since I've been on earth <laughs> and the coaches always suck mm-hmm. and they get built up mm-hmm. to be like the next savior, right? Yeah. Charlie Weiss, Ty Whitting, wait, and then they turn on them. For sure. And then they have their touchdown Jesus because Jesus only likes Notre Dame. We all know that, right? Look at first down Moses. Look at the Jesus. He's, he's making the sign that they make on the football field. I love it here. Let's go to the grotto and pray to Rudy who sucked and never none of that happened. Right? I mean, it's just like enough. <laughs> enough. And they this fucked up the whole building for a while. They screwed up the whole Manti thing too. Yeah. They didn't oh, respond. God. They did a terrible job. And you have these uh, rich, obnoxious mopes um, protecting the image of the school rather than actually diving in with this kid sure. who's struggling. Sure. And um, they didn't really support him. Not in the least. And but they made money. They made a ton of money. They did, and yeah. that is what Notre Dame is good at. No one's. I mean, look, when you root for Notre Dame, you're not rooting for Jack Swarbrick. You're not rooting for the president of the university. Those guys are awful anywhere. You're rooting for um, not you, but a Notre Dame. <laughs> the argument about you know we're independent and we have the NBC. I mean, just that that NBC contract that they get the games every weekend, and we have to watch them get their ass kicked. <laughs> Every weekend, and and play this game that they are some phenomenal program. When they have, I don't even. They won a bowl game in the last fifteen years. That is entirely untrue, and they're not getting their asses kicked every weekend. 
I mean, they're still still one of the winningest. I'm sorry, they they but they're they one of the winningest programs in football, even in the last 25, 30 years. Right, and they they play a tough schedule, man. <laughs> they do. <laughs> I mean, two service academies, Patrick. <laughs> Not everyone gets to play two service academies. They are opening September 3rd with Ohio State. I, look, hey, I'm I will hear to I defend c- all things Notre Dame either. Let me, I, they have their flaws. But yeah, that's who you grow up rooting for when you grow up in this area and you don't really, I mean, they're the team you see on TV all the time. I think I was just kind of annoyed by sure. the whole Irish Catholic stuff and in your face. And uh, meanwhile, I went to Dayton. Yeah, which and I will say this about Notre Dame because I had some buddies that went there and I went there to hang out. Sure. And it is a blast. <laughs> it is Here so fun. It is like, mm. oh, wow, we could just can we stare at each other in this old building? <laughs> can we go downstairs? Oh, wait, when is it fun here? Eight Saturdays a year, seven Saturdays a year. That's it. It's not fun any other time. Why? Because you guys are dorks. This is. <laughs> Because you're socially off? No, I feel kidding. like the Brimley banter next week is going to have a lot in the mailbag. No, I mean, I, 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 I would encourage people to check out the University of Dayton. It's uh, not too much further. It's a lot of fun. Sure. Maybe a little more open-minded. It's smaller. You can run on the field while the band is playing. Maybe. I mean, you have a lot more opportunities to do that. You can run on the field people. at the Sox game. <laughs> it's true. You have to be in sixth grade, though. <laughs> and you have... Um, at uh, at Dayton, you have uh, you know we're not Division One, but we sure. do have a nice football tradition there. In fact, I think we have the most Super Bowl winnings out of any uh, university as far as head coaches, <laughs> with uh, John Gruden and Chuck Noll. You can count them up, or we can count Notre Dame's, whatever it may be. Um, I'm not going to end up being a, a fan of the Irish. <laughs> Everything's so choreographed too. Like, okay, guys, at the kickoff, we go go. Irish. Okay. Okay, guys, get ready. We're about to throw marshmallows at each other. So hateful. Guys, get ready. We're about to all do push ups at the same time. <laughs> guys, get ready. We're all about to do we're all about to hang up the fourth, it's the third quarter. Guys, guys, this is how we do it. Why didn't we I, I, I never I didn't know how to hang out in high school. I didn't know how to be. I didn't know how to have friends before I came here. Now what do I do? Push ups? Where's the leprechaun? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'd like to have uh, John Rudiger on here. What just happened? I met Rudy. Sean Astin, (laughs) ladies and gentlemen. Bring him in for the counterpoint. Dude, when I did... uh, You did Letterman with Sean Astin, (laughs) and then you just turned on him right now in a very WWE-ish way. Just a steel chair to Rudy Rudiger's back. No, it was Colbert that I was on with Sean Astin. I'd like to apologize. You did Colbert with Sean Astin. And I said, I don't want to talk about any of this Rudy shit. (laughs) But Goonies, you are good in Goonies. (laughs) You just said none of that. Uh, Sean Aston told me that he hated Rudy. He thought that Rudy was obnoxious, too, and that he's like, I'm just embarrassed that none of that actually even happened. <laughs> there was no jersey scene. I didn't, no one chanted my name. <laughs> no, but um, I, I am pulling for Notre Dame this year. This is my favorite episode. <laughs> this is, I'm sorry for interrupting. Please go ahead. I want this to keep going. No, I. You're rooting for them this year? Yes. Yes, because I because uh, I realize I, I have too much anger about them, <laughs> too much anger about Our Lady, that didn't let girls in for how long? <laughs> you are going to have some very Notre happy da- people reaching out. Notre to Notre Dame you. stands for Our Lady. Oh, I love it. Oh, where are the ladies here? They go. They have to go to school across <laughs> the Mary. street. We don't let them in here. They're not not Our Ladies. Just the lady. The lady who doesn't. I mean, she existed that that one, but okay. Namantis. <laughs> Not. She did not exist. Well, she did, but she was uh, Ronnie. What documentary did you watch? Can I ask you that? What documentary did you watch? Because I watched one about his girlfriend. (laughs) What was his girlfriend? But it was a guy. Lynn I. Yeah, Ronnie. Yes. Who then transitioned later on. So, yes. Lene, Lene, Lene. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what an incredible story. I love the uh, disclaimer. The participants did not know that, you know. Right. Because you're watching it like, how could, they're not even going (laughs) to. Right. Just going to. Pretend? Why do they call, keep calling him him? Right. Yeah, it's um, quite what a crazy the, story. Quite the story. But again, it's like. I knew that. What do you think? I want to know what you think happened. What do I think happened? Yeah. I'm just taking it as face value. I'm okay. not seeing like a conspiracy okay. in here or anything. I okay. think the guy just really got duped. Got duped. Got catfished. Got catfished. When people didn't really know what catfishing was. Right. But, you know, clearly 
because Notre Dame is a very high, and this is one of the things I like about Notre Dame, and maybe they're a little bit like snotty about it, about how intellectual they are. Like they're <laughs> they're a good school, right? And it takes a lot to get in there. Absolutely. And you might hear that from people that go to school there. <laughs> but they mentioned it once or twice. This domer <laughs> that we're talking about that they made a two part documentary on was not intelligent enough to realize that his girlfriend that he he was weeping for <laughs> on a national stage he had never met. <laughs> he had never met. No, I think he realized that. I think he I, I definitely think he was aware of it. You know what I would I think he knew. Thought was missing from the uh, documentary where his girlfriend was the about the grandma cuz they're like this story all year, they've been talking about, you know, he lost his grandmother and his girlfriend, but the girlfriend is not dead. Yeah. I always thought it'd be funny, but the grandma is. Grandma is but the grandma, still deceased. We have confirmed. We, She's super dead. We <laughs> have been out there. She is in the gravest condition. <laughs> she is. Because everyone's like, you can't, you said, everyone feels bad for this guy. The, the girlfriend didn't even, she didn't even die. I know. I know. We said, but the grandma did. The grandma did. <laughs> for sure. And all of these things you're saying about Notre Dame, how it spins out of control, how everything is bigger than it is. I mean, Manti Teo has to hate now, right? Because that's what did this to him, right? Like, he did an interview where, I mean, he knew his grandma had passed away. He had just had an emotional moment about what he thought was this woman passing away and, and said it. And then just the media circus exploded from there. Like, all these things you're saying are 100% Oh, correct. do you know who else was probably, and I don't know the, the, na the real names, but Father Michael McMahon was also very fired up about the dead girlfriend. And he runs PR sure. at Notre Dame. And he probably was like, listen to this. Sure. It's another Notre Dame mystique. Right. We're destined to win. Absolutely. We're going to overcome all this death. Absolutely. And we are the Irish. And the miracles will happen. Meanwhile, they didn't even look into it. Because they don't care. That's why they changed Joe Thiesman's name to Thiesman. <laughs> they don't care about the player. Wait, they changed his name? I think Notre Dame did. I think the Notre Dame. Where's that coming from? I mean, that's like an old tale. Joe Theismann. Really? Joe Theismann. His name is really Theismann. Uh-huh. And when he was a Heisman contender, Notre Dame made him change his name. Or they just changed his name. Ah. Started pronouncing it the other way. That's out there. I didn't know that. Well, of course you didn't. You're a Notre Dame fan. <laughs> You're blinded. There's You're no coverage a... on them. I would never get to see that anywhere. They don't really talk about it much. It's interesting. I just fast forward to uh, Joe Theismann. Theismann. Mm -hmm. He became what? Accomplished commentator. Won games. Mm -hmm. Had a great career. Great career. Had a family. Family. Had children. Children. Sent his son. Broke his leg. To Dayton. To Dayton. Unbelievable. Because he knew. <laughs> Is that why? And guess what his name was at Dayton? Wow. Theismann. <laughs> they kept it. Okay. No, I think it was. I, I don't uh, know what the, I don't. Know, I don't know what the point of that part of the story is then. They didn't go Not back even to he sent his kid to Dayton. Sure. Because he knows. All right. That was just my point. All right. Anyway, I'm sure we're losing subscribers. <laughs> this is our Dayton recruiting episode. <laughs> I want to pivot to the NASA launch that didn't happen this week. Did you hear about Artemis? No. The NASA launch. It was an unmanned mission, right? That was supposed to happen Monday, I believe. I did see a little bit of something about this. And then, uh, and then they were like, hey, we have engine failure. We'll have it fixed by Friday. That I did not that's hear. That's weird to me. When was it supposed to go? Uh, Monday. And now they're like, we have to fix the engine that's going to outer space. We'll see you in 96 hours. Just a Where small... we fix the engine that's going to outer space. So there's no one on it. Just send it. <laughs> but like a lot of people took Monday off of work, right? Like there were people like, you're just moving. I get pissed when like... A game gets rained out. Now they're like, and is there a launch on Friday? They're doing a double header? Why are you doing a Monday launch? That's kind of a weak time for it, isn't it? Can you imagine Sunday night? That'd be cool. We as gotta hell. go, babe. That'd I'm launching cool. a, I'm launching something tomorrow. That. Can't drink anymore. <laughs> we gotta go. Why are you doing it on a Monday? Tell them the engine doesn't work. All right, fine. All right, text them. We can stay. We're going to move it. I thought you were saying they should do it on Sunday night, and that would be awesome as a primetime television event. But yeah, they probably need that? daylight, I would imagine, is a, it's because a, they always do it bright and early in the morning out in Cape Canaveral. Yeah, it's always really dictated by weather, too, big time, right? They weather should, yeah. and light. And I heard, um, and I did see on um, one of those weekend shows that they have mannequins mm -hmm. on this thing. Do they really? And they call them moonikins. 
NASA. Come on. NASA does. That's a great name. That's not a joke. That's awesome. And they have uh, there's something else that they're putting on this one. Is this one landing on the moon, or is it just like I believe it's orbiting the moon? Okay, that's my understanding. Is that it's gonna it's gonna circle the old moon, it's circle, gonna drop off some DoorDash, and it's gonna come right back. I thought they were going up there and they were going to race a, a Russian rocket. <laughs> no, no, they're not. That I'm like they've of. been doing in Chicago, like the <laughs> Fast and <laughs> Furious. <laughs> they're going to do some donuts <laughs> on the moon. They were going up there. We're going to spin out, make, create some skids. What and do they, they call come it? back? Drafting is that what they keep calling it on the news and everything? These is people are what? drafting. I'm like, it seems a little. A draft seems a little light, doesn't it? How like, are they even able to do this? I have no idea. I have Taking no over idea. the streets. Unbelievable. Would have you, you gotten involved at all? Have you raced? No. <laughs> I'm three and two. You know, I like new hobbies. I got a membership. Um, I got a membership to the to the drafting team. And, guys. Uh, I'm three and two. Guys, you're blocking McCormick Place. <laughs> we could do this at the Arboretum. <laughs> Meet me out there. I, got, I forgot to unplug from my charger. Can I unplug real quick before we start? I have to unplug from the charger. Is NASA responding to the private... Uh, privatization of space travel. I think so, right? And that's why they're getting back into it? I think so. It's not going to help if they keep delaying flights, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I do not like that for air travel. Am I right? I paid for Economy Plus, and now I have to wait till Friday to go to the moon? We forgot to get an oil change. <laughs> so we're going to bring it in, and we're doing this on Thursday. <laughs> we are one flight attendant short, so we cannot get this to the moon until Friday. On Labor Day weekend? They're doing it on a long weekend? That's the way to do it. America. People are going to be pissed. People are going to be talking about it, though. When was the last time we were on the moon? Like 50 years ago. Come on. That's what it's about 50 years ago. We had, like, stopped NASA. Oh, my god. They just gosh. started selling hats at Target and really had stopped all their other work. They had just become merchandising for a while there, hadn't they? That makes me feel very old. Just licensed. That we it haven't does, been there? right? Long time. What year was the last year a person... Went on the moon. I would guess and walked around seventy ish. Nineteen. Who would you think was the last person? So to you get walk a guess that spans a, t a decade. Okay, I'll go. I'll go plus or minus <laughs> two years from nineteen seventy. I'm gonna guess somewhere nineteen sixty eight to seventy two is a great range. I'm gonna guess between nineteen fifty and two thousand. Okay, hang on, hang on. If we were playing mountain climber, if we were the yodel guy, the last time someone was on the moon, I sixty eight to seventy two is my range in mountain. Katie climber. just said. 72? 1972. Come on. Good for you, buddy. Well, because I, I knew 2022 minus 50 was 72. It's kind of a thing I do. I knew it's been about 50 years. So I had been working on that one for a while. Um, thank you. I um, I don't know. Yeah. Would you go to the moon? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like this weekend? I mean, on Friday? <laughs> what are you doing this no, weekend? With the, with the, the Moonikins? <laughs> Not on a holiday weekend with the Moonikins. <laughs> with the Moonikins and Hollywood? Would you do a like a like a? Do you remember the movie launch? Mannequin? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. Would you do like a SpaceX launch? Like a, no, I no. Would, I would, would only do, do a it. commercial. I would only do it with the government. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't do it with Bezos or uh, with a or, billionaire. Or that e makes sense. Or Elon. A Branson. Would you do Virgin? Um, trust Branson? Maybe. Yeah. Is he kind of like the... Because he's a knight. He's like the least bad... Right? He's the knight billionaire. He's like the... He's the closest to Batman, and I, I kinda, think. And I understand him more. Sure. Than, than some of these other guys. Sure. But I would... He um, names his kids in real words. I'm all for us being more involved in it than have it be privatized. Yeah? But what's, what's the goal here? They want to go... They want to start going to the moon? That's a great question. want to start know. colonizing... Because I hear that we are still cooperating with the Russians, like that I, the ISS, the International Space Station. That's we're still cool up there. Yeah, everyone's Gucci in outer space, which I didn't realize is owned by the House of Pancakes. I did oh, the International Space Station. Yes. Oh, that's where the I the, and I hop comes from. The International oh. Space Station. Well, they're not going to have a pancake house up there. They're going to have a. <laughs> I get that. Okay, they got a space station. And how international is it with just two countries up there? <laughs> it really is. Let's mix it up. Let's go. Send some other people in there. Get in here, Granada. I don't know how they're getting along, but they are still Send working Salvador. together. Salvador. They are. Good. And now you have um, China. Okay. That is apparently very secretive about their space program. Really? So they're forecasting maybe some competition again for uh, moon colonization. Wow. Because some parts of the moon are better than the others. I believe that. There's Would you buy a condo the, uh, on the moon? Uh, would I buy a condo on, no, on the moon? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. 
I might do like a timeshare. Sure. Yeah, you're not going to be up there all that yeah. often. I'll get a I membership. Get that. that makes sense. I would do that. I heard if you go there three times a year, it's, <laughs> it's worth, worth it. it. It's yeah. not bad. It's not, it's not a lot of times. You guys want to go to the moon? <laughs> got to make it worth my money. Just, I've got the moon still. If you guys want to go instead of Lala this year, I got the, just let me know. I got to give them dates. If you had to guess mm-hmm. a year in the future where it would be realistic to go to the moon for a three-day weekend. For a three-day weekend. When do you think, what year do you think that would be? 2042. Really? I would say 20 years from now. I would think we're not that far away. People have gone there. Is that correct? 20 years from now. And what, what you think, like there's going to be stuff to do up there? No, there, no, no. But like, could someone go? Yes. Is there going to be like, is it going to be the Wisconsin Dells? Not yet. Not yeah. until like 2054. I don't think they'll have a Rocky Rococo's pizza until the 2050s on the moon. That's my estimate. There will be a salad bar on the moon, though, in the, in the mid-2040s, I think. I don't think we're that far away. What do you think is the first thing they're going to put up there? Like a Walgreens? I think it'll probably be, or it'll a, be a Bucky's, one of those huge-ass Texas gas stations. Because you need a lot of gas to get back from the moon. Would you assume that? Dude, I just went to Bucky's. And you have never been to I've one? I've never been. We talked about it a little bit. When? Uh, on this podcast. This podcast? You got to listen to this podcast Which episode? every once in a while. The one where I was in Texas. I and not... I went to Bucky's. Dude, I had a blast there. It's a, it's a town, isn't Everything's it? good. Holy shit. Pat just joined us. <laughs> where did Pat come from this episode? This is amazing. They had, uh, I bought a little fresh apple pie there. Yeah, a little fresh, and they got a little nut area I where you a... can cinnamon nuts. What is it like a beignet, but not a beignet, like a, uh, it's a... Uh... A doughy. You dare call it a sweet roll of some sort? No, 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 no. This was more uh, later in the day food. Oh. It was, it was hot and it had meat in it. Oh, like a. Uh, like a bushki. Like a, 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 a. What do you call those? Like a meat pocket of some sort. Like yes. A, like a fancy hot pocket. <laughs> it was a meat pocket. Okay. Um, but yeah, Bucky's. That place is insane, isn't it? Throw one of those on the moon. I think they would put one up there right away. Add that to the lunar program. <laughs> 2042 going to the moon. Can you imagine? That would be amazing. Do you think? I mean, because people are already going now, right? Like, like on these commercial flights. Are, are the commercial flights leaving yet? Commercial I don't, I don't flights are not landing there. Are not going to the moon. No. And three day weekend might be tough, but I think there's going to be people going up there. How long does it take to get there? That's the thing. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not including travel time. <laughs> Did, am I insane? Did we think 20 years ago? Did we think in 2002 that I'd be able to get to Los Angeles in four hours in an airplane? No. Dude, I love how optimistic you are. <laughs> I'm way off on this. No, you are correct. We I am way off on this. We couldn't get back from Rochester. Yeah, I, I am way off on this. I, uh, this is going to be 2060. 20. I wish I could go back in time eight minutes and delete my 2042 estimate. Hey, guys, your flight's delayed tomorrow. We're not, uh, we can't leave till October. <laughs> oh, Okay. Let me just change my work days. This was supposed to be a Labor Day weekend thing, <laughs> which we have coming up. That we do, buddy. Are you, do you have any plans? You, I'm, I'm not going to do any labor. That's for sure. I'm you, off this weekend. Are you off? I am off. I've got some shows like Thursday night, uh, but I think I'm off for the weekend. Dude, I want to recommend a, uh, I saw the Elvis movie. That, did you did, really? Did I mentioned that? I'm so excited about this because you wanted to go and I felt bad. I, I wasn't particularly feeling it. So we went and played video games at a museum and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a very nice compromise on your See, part. See, I can't read you in real time. Really? I thought you were up for it. You yeah, would go? I would have up for anything. But you're not really that into it. No, no, no. I, I would have done it, and I would have enjoyed it. But, like, I wasn't mad that you chose the video game route. But me saying <laughs> now, like, hey, it's a great movie. Does that make you want to see? Yeah, like, in theory, I always want to see movies. But I never want to go, oh, I got to take these next two hours to do it? No, thanks. This one just makes sense. This is just interesting because it has his start, his background, what influenced him, how he got going, his ultimate demise yeah. too much. You realize like he was never really in charge of his own life. Sure. This dude. Sure. He wasn't. And he was, um, you know, just got messed up and in drugs and lost himself. And, but the impact and like the, to see them, the way they portray mm-hmm. him going on, like Ed Sullivan, mm-hmm. him, the response to him, you know, gyrating. Sure. You know, Elvis, the pelvis, pelvis thrusts, that whole yeah. thing. He went to the army. Like, when he signed up, enlisted, that was like a whole PR thing to clean up his image because he was on the wrong side. Like, it's a culture war that is still going on right now. Sure. And I think if you're out there listening, <laughs> are you on the side of 
the Beatles, you can't have hair that long. Shake some trees. Like, that's still this, that side yeah. still exists. Yeah. This whole, like, argh, argh, canceling things, canceling people. That's all about this, like, unwillingness to let these new creative ideas and these new things come into our culture that's always changing. Like, it's not ours anymore, right? Like, we're on the higher end of it. Like, there need to be new ideas pushing through that you're not going to love. And it's the way it's always supposed to be, I think. Most of his songs are borrowed. They're taken, a lot of them, from black artists. Absolutely. Gospel music. Absolutely. He was completely influenced. Tupelo, Mississippi is right next to Jackson, Mississippi. There's sure. a lot of times where, like, rock and roll started, blues, bluesgrass. I don't say rock and roll, but, like, blues, bluesgrass, jazz. Like, it began in there and then yeah. sprung out. I mean, we have to acknowledge that. Absolutely. We stole their stuff. Do they talk about that in the movie? Like, it's does that in come there. up a lot? So that's great. I mean, this is one of those subjects where no matter how many movies there are about Elvis, there's still more shit to learn, right? Like, like his story is so big and so bigger than him. I mean, like so many artists have talked about their thoughts on him stealing music and 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 Chuck D has come out and you know said awful things and then came kind of backtracked and was like, he's kind of more just the he's he's the face we can attach it to. Right, like like some of this wasn't even on him, but he's the the one that you're going to listen to if we if we say he did this. But I think he also connected the worlds absolutely and brought them together. And I think if you go into this movie, everyone has this idea of Elvis, this vision of Elvis, these thoughts on Elvis. This was the most human I ever felt he was, like the most okay. like. You know what? This is just a dude. Just having a peanut butter and, and nana sandwich. Dead at forty two. That's crazy. And when you're forty six watching it versus when you're 11 years old and yeah. your you know seventh grade sister thinks he's still alive <laughs> and they're listening to uh audio cassettes of phone calls of voice recordings really <laughs> remember that whole elvis is alive thing? <laughs> kind of but like they were in on that theory oh, my sister oh, that's a good one <laughs> my sister's friend was that's way a in fun little it. conspiracy theory right there and last no one's getting hurt last night i'm watching uh tv with jose and there's a commercial about michael jackson and jose is like dad how come everyone says michael jackson's still alive <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm like because everyone said elvis was still alive. those are never gonna change are they those, uh, there's always gonna be that but how about those two very connected King, king. Very connected. No one wants to believe it. No one wants their idols to be broken down. No one wants Manti Teo's girlfriend to be fake. They want their hero to be the king. And by the way, I want to talk about Manti and Notre Dame a little bit, but we'll get into that <laughs> Thank later. Thank God. Because I, I want to get your thoughts on it. I don't uh, think we've really gotten into how you feel. I want to soften on Notre Dame hoops. I'm going to throw them a bone here. <laughs> Love Notre Dame hoops. Digger Phelps, mm -hmm. like it, like the UCLA, you broke the streak. Mm -hmm. They but, were they bookended the streak. Do you know that? They were the last yeah. team to beat UCLA before right. the streak. And then they broke the 88-game winning streak on the other end. Uh, was Kelly Chapuka on that team? I don't know. Dave Corzine? I or, believe so. Did Dave Corzine go to ND or he went to DePaul? He went to DePaul. Oh, good call. He went to DePaul. I'm thinking of uh, who's the other big guy they had. Ah! Anyway. David Rivers later on they had. He was a good player in the 80s versus uh, those good DePaul teams. Yeah, they were. Uh, I could tolerate Notre Dame basketball because they were never very good. Sure. You know, every now and then they'd sure. be decent. Mm -hmm. uh, so they weren't like, didn't have the swagger yet to sure. put up with the, you know, the nonsense. Um, Did you get beat up by a kid in a Notre Dame starter jacket? Is that what happened? I want to know <laughs> where this all stemmed from. Starter. <laughs> starter. It wasn't a fantasy. <laughs> My buddy had a big uh, ND struggle. Dude, I actually told this story to Joe Sarah Knight. This is a total 80s, like, kids. Just I love this. No, just time on your hands. Like, what did we do back in? Mm -hmm. And I don't know how this came up to me. Actually, Joe was talking about a Diary of a Wimpy Kid, um, Dork Diaries. Are you familiar with any of these books? I'm not. Now, these books, there's like... You think saying I should be? I remember you see, like, the... Uh, <laughs> Are you familiar with Wimpy Kids and Dorks, Jim? What? <laughs> you don't have children, but is this your reading? Do you... Do you remember when seeing these books for the first time, though? And being yeah. like, oh, I, they're allowed to have a book? Yeah. These wimpy kids <laughs> and dorks? And now it's like, it's great. And they're wildly popular. Books. Are they really? Oh, yeah. These books are great. So we were talking about this kid. Um, and, and, and actually, this guy maybe wasn't, you know, we were buddies um, at Cajunans. And he invited me and my, my friend Bobby over I talked about. They had bought this house. It was an old rectory. Okay. From uh, back in the day. So mm -hmm. a big home. Had a wing on it that kind of, and his grandma lived with them. In that wing? But she was not, 
really with it. Not yet. You know, she yep. was um, invalid, mm -hmm. as you would, you know. Did we talk about invalid earlier? I believe we did. Yeah, <laughs> she was invalid. Okay, um, <laughs> I, I, we might have to dance around this. Right, we'll see what happens. Okay. You tell me. You you go ahead. So, anyways, one of those moments where you're at your buddy's house. And you're sure. Like, what do we do? Do you want to see my grandma? Oh my god! Like what? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> you the grandma lives here. You're like, yeah, I do though. Yeah, yeah let's I, go. Of course, I do. Like, dude, she can't. Oh my gosh, she's not gonna be able to hear us. You oh. know. So we go down this wing. And here's grandma, not awake, not, and he's in there to show us that, you know, grandma, hey, grandma. And, oh, my and, God. And we're like, John, John. Oh, you got We're God. like, stop. stop. We believe you. <laughs> but we're, but we're kind of laughing. <laughs> right. You know, it's like one of those, right. like a church laugh. Right. We like, can go. hear you. We Come got. on. So we go. All right. Now we're back in the home, oh. like the main part of the house. Now it's time to play There's like more. hunt. Hunt down each other. Like, we're, we're too old to play hide and seek when you're in sixth grade. We don't, sure. We won't play hide and seek. Right. We'll play, uh, you know, cops, robber, or right. whatever the hell we're playing. Right. So John goes to hide, and uh, we're looking for him. Well, we can't find him, and we're like, Bobby and I, like, no way he went down he, by in grandma. The wing. He wouldn't go by grandma's he wing. He wouldn't go to the wing. So Bobby and I, like, inch our way towards uh, grandma's bedroom. And all of a sudden, her bed, like, like the hospital no. bed, starts coming up, and scares the hell out of Bobby and I. Like, oh I was like, God. and I, like, take off, and Bobby runs, like, halfway with me, and then he starts, he's like, come come on, come back. So we go back, and I'm like, oh, like no. the, the feet are coming up, and then the chair, the, the head going down, and now we're terrified, yeah, dying laughing. All of the above. The best feeling in the oh world. Oh, my God. Right? Euphoria. And um, finally, we just are, like, tumbling back into the house, like, dying laughing. And we, we can't find our buddy. He comes he, – he shows up. Where were you? Like, dude, we we're looking for you. You were your grandma's bed. He's like, that was me. <laughs> I was in there. And he was hiding on the side of his grandma's bed <laughs> with the remote. And just like, is, do you remember O.J. Simpson and Naked oh Gun? God, you yes. remember Norberg? Just, yes. rrr, rrr. Oh, just <laughs> what a Nordberg reference. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I don't know where this story was buried. Oh, my gosh. But something Joe said last night, and I'm telling her, and she's laughing, but also like, you guys did that? <laughs> I'm like, it was his grandma. Right. It he, was did. His, he did. His, I had nothing. He had probably been doing it. He was probably had it planned oh my out. God. But one of the one of the uh, funniest experiences. As you're telling Josephine this story, are you like, I I'm not sure I should be, but yes. I can't stop all this. Like I, <laughs> I haven't said this in a long time. This is therapy. I had right to stand now. up. I had to stand up. I was like working it out like uh, like an open mic, <laughs> you're like up against the board. I was. I was so like, Grandma's over here in this wing. Now we're over here, right? We're army crawling. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, we had I've had friends, uh, several friends whose grandma was like in the garage or like in another room that you didn't <laughs> go garage. into. Like they converted the hang on, they converted the I'm garage into. Her, I'm picturing her under the car on one <laughs> yeah, of those. Maybe not uh, on one of those wheelies. Yeah, I had a the, lot of friends scoot, just scoot out. Hey, yeah. hey, what's up, boy? You boys getting into? Oh, I'm sorry. I had a lot of friends whose grandma just, did oil changes on oh. space shuttles. That's what I meant. She was in the garage doing oil changes on space. So if they forgot to do that, we can get that done. That's all I meant. I had a lot of friends whose grandmas like lived in another part of the house that we didn't go into. And if there was ever like, you want to open that door? It's like, yeah, you want to open? Yeah. What? Yeah, of course we want to open that. What? We've wondered what's in that door. It certainly isn't normal because it's been closed for 11 years. <laughs> I've never seen it open. It's dusty. There's no prints on it. Like, oh, my yeah, you want to see that door, but I've never seen the continuation to that level. That is such a kids movie thing to do. Oh yeah, I mean, it feels like a, a scene out of a out of an eighties movie. Oh my god. Oh man. But anyway, hey. um, I I do want to recommend that uh, <laughs> that Elvis movie. In conclusion: Check out the Elvis documentary. Check out the Elvis movie and Google okay. Kelly Trapuca. Yes, Google. It's a great reference. And, of Notre Dame. And I want you also look up these great uh, ND players. <laughs> oh boy, because no, I I want to be fair. Uh, -huh. uh Brady Quinn. Okay, great college player. Let's not. He had a good career. Jimmy Clausen. Jimmy Clausen, great college player as well. We're talking about their college careers. They're fantastic. He's and, not making fun of them. And I think that is the key about Notre Dame is like their their ability to identify talent and then have people live up to it. 
You know, like a Charlie Weiss. Sure, sure, like a Charlie. What was the last? Are they still uh, paying him? <laughs> how many? Uh, how many Pro Bowlers did Dayton have on the field last year? I don't know, Jim, but we are running late here. <laughs> Suddenly, we I have gave no time. You the Super Bowl stats earlier. We have no time. That's uh, that's what I have. Uh, we were going to talk about corporal punishment at the grade school level. I don't know if we're going to get into that this week. Maybe we could tease it for next week. We have some September trivia. Yes, we've been uh, running hot here. Labor Day. We'll come back with all that next week and. And Pat's thoughts on Boston College. BC. Uh, <laughs> okay, I was just kidding, Pat. I didn't really know you had thoughts on this. Didn't they take down Notre Dame after their biggest win ever? Uh, it wasn't the biggest win ever. Their biggest win was when they beat UCLA. I think we talked about that one. But that is, but you're absolutely right. The 93 Florida State win? Yeah, oh, I know. Jim Flanagan was on the uh, cover of SI that year for Notre Dame. That's why. That's another reason. They had a defensive lineman named Jim Flanagan oh, yeah. who's playing as I'm a child. It did of not course, spell it, I'm going, one N, but that's and then he played for the Bears and went, uh, an A. Was it? Oh, it was an I. Yeah, one N and an I. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did play for the Bears. He did play for the Bears because people in Chicago love drafting average Notre Dame players to I try mean, see, and sell Chris a few Zorich tickets. Was great. Chris Zorich was great. <laughs> Jim Flanagan was a late round pick who was very productive. Hey, Tom Thayer, Dave Dewerson. 85 Bear Domers. Thank you. There you go. There you go. There Unreal. You go. All could, right. I could throw you a bone. Hey, we got a great new review. Can I, can yes. I bring this out from our friend Kelly Quinn, 526, my traveling go-to. I work in sales and spend a lot of time driving all around upstate New York while listening to these guys. If you see me, you will know who I am because I'm the weirdo laughing hysterically in my car by myself because of Pat and Jim. Oh, Kelly, that was so nice. What a review. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kelly. It was great to meet Kelly recently up doing some shows in Rochester. Kelly's a Rochester brim. I love it. We really appreciate that, Kelly. That's a great review, Kelly. Love um, me brims. I heard from some people uh, after the live episode and after last week. In fact, my buddy Bobby Rafferty sent me a nice note. He was happy uh, to hear about the uh, campaign posters and some of the stuff we discussed. I love um, it. Should we hold on to September trivia for September? I think we should. As we close out, Augusto? Wake me up when September begins, Pat. And my apologies to anyone that no. took the Notre Dame stuff no. uh, too seriously. I'm just playing That's around. That's fine. You but know what happens when you, people you, you, we all know the talk report. shit about Notre Dame. We, Joe Theismann's leg got broken. We'll see what happens to Pat next week. All right, and we'll be back here for episode 149. Anything you want to plug you got coming up? I uh, Thursday night I'll be in Aurora at the Roundhouse. I got a lot of private stuff coming up. I don't I uh, I don't think I have anything around here until my Zany's headlining shows that we're going to be announcing. Can I give a little teaser here for the Brims? Uh, November 27th, I'm going to be headlining Zany's Chicago. And then December 18th, I will be headlining Zany's in Rosemont. Uh, so we're going to sell those out. So that is we'll beautiful. Be sell- putting tickets on sale in September. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a little holiday time with Jimmy and some great shows. Great to hear. Also, I'm going to be with Sebastian this weekend in Niagara Falls. And then next weekend, solo mission. My man. Even Jimmy can't come with me. I'm very bummed about this. Too, I will buddy. be in Denver oh. at Comedy Works South. I can't wait. So to come hear on about out. That. We will be back together, Jim and I, on September 24th. Yeah, we will. For a great, great event with the Friends. Danny Did Foundation. Danny Did. Unbelievable. Hearts group. and Hugs. September 24th, Hearts and Hugs. Um, that's at the uh, Theater on the theater Lake. Theater on the Lake. I always think I'm going to say that wrong. It is Theater on the Lake. I feel like it should be something else, right? But it's Theater on the Lake. That's perfect. Uh, you want to rename it? No, I think it's a great name. But I always, when I'm about to say it, I'm never confident. You know what I mean? But it's great. Theater in the Lake. It has a uh, Arboretum feel there. It really does. I, uh, I'm going to show my membership. There's, uh, By the way, my membership also gets me uh, uh, a membership at, uh, at at 300 Arboreta across the country. So there's... Rest- Is that the uh, plural form of That's Arboretum? That's what it says on the form. Arboreta. So the, uh, yeah. So uh, there's reciprocity at over 300 Arboreta. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Love that. I'm going to go get wasted away again in Arboretaville before our next episode. <laughs> Go to a burrito station. <laughs> Extra sour cream. I love this. Love it, man. All right, everyone. Have a fantastic week closing out the eighth month of the year. We're going to be getting into our last quarter, Jim. Q4. Really looking Let's forward to Let's get the Q4. four up. Don't they do <laughs> this do in it. South Bend? It's, but we're, it's too early for it. We got to get through September first. We smack the play like a champions today on the way in. Yeah, we have a long way to go. It's 31 days this month. And then September kind of mails it in. Did you hear we don't change our clocks this year? Am I hearing that correctly? Are is we that what's not? happening? I look at Katie for anything that is related to anything in the future. We'll research that, and we'll talk about that on the 149. I can't wait. I Brims, really can't. send us a note. Send us some reviews. And if you're mad at me, send me a note. <laughs> I'll read it. I love you. Just know that. And I love you too, Jim. Love you, buddy. Have a great week. You too. Bye, everyone.